Hello. Now that you've got the box model under your belt, you understand margin, border, and padding, it's time to make some more beautiful looking pages and to control the way things uh, are arranged on our pages, we're going to learn about CSS Flexbox. While this is a relatively new CSS technology, it's supported in all the browsers and you can use it pretty much safely no matter what. Uh, can I use pretty much shows green boxes for everything, so we're good to go. Now, what I've arranged here is a page with five individual divs on it. They could be sections, they could be another unit, but they're a block level unit, so they're all inside divs. So I've got five, each one for an animal, and they're divs, so they will go 100% of the way across the browser window, no matter how wide it is, right? So. Uh, let's look at the CSS. Well, let's look at the uh, HTML first. Um, so I've got the heading at the top, fine. And then I have one div called container. It's got the ID container one on it. And that contains everything on the page up to, okay, there's two paragraphs at the bottom that are not inside the container. So these two paragraphs. And the first thing to realize about Flexbox is all the items that you want to be flex, they have to be inside a container. So that's what I've done here with the very generic element div. I have put all my animals inside this one div. And then inside the div, each item, each animal is itself a div and it has the same class on it, single. So there's the lion and here, I'll put them so the lion is first and then the zebra and so on. So a div contains the whole blue area or light blue area that you see surrounding the image, the H2 and one paragraph about the animal. So each of these divs for the animals is set up exactly the same way and each div has on it the class single. So when we look at the CSS, um, the class single styles each animal. So it's got a background color, it's got a skinny border with a little border radius on it. Uh, it has padding inside, it has a bottom margin to make a space below each one of these divs. And other than that, it's pretty simple CSS on each animal div. Then I also zeroed out the margin and padding on the bottom of the P that's inside that div. Now my container that I showed you a moment ago that contains all five of the animal divs, it has no styles at all so far. So the first thing we're going to do is add the all important container declaration, which is display flex. Before display flex, page looks like this. After display flex, save, reload, the page immediately looks like this. So we just changed one thing. The container of all five elements now has the declaration display flex and that has made all five of the things inside this div line up on a horizontal axis. So the default is horizontal, and in Flexbox, that's called a row. We'll look at the opposite a little later, and that would be making it a column, which would be vertical. But the first thing we want to fix, I think, about this is that we see the animal divs have different widths and probably we would like them to have identical widths. So one of the first things you need to think about as you're learning to use the different flex properties is, do I put the property inside the container or do I put the property inside the item? And the one I'm going to do now that determines 
the relative width of each item, I'm going to put that inside the item CSS rule because that's the only place it will work. And it is the rule flex and it affects whether the item can grow, whether the item can shrink, and uh, the minimum maximum width of the item, which often we put zero for that or auto. The specifics of this are described in detail in the Robbins book. So if I put this into my uh, dot single style rule, which is the class single, which is on all the animal divs, and I save and I reload, you see that now each item is the identical width of all the others. And if I change the size of the page up to a point, they will eventually fall down uh, as the width gets too narrow, but they will shrink and they will grow depending on the size of the browser window. Then eventually when it's too small, they will wrap. Oh, but they won't. They're not wrapping. They're getting cut off. So how would we make it wrap? How would we make the elephant fall down, the rhino fall down to a second line? And again, you have to think, well, where do I put that CSS property? Do I put it in the container or do I put it in the item? And the wrap property is in the container. That's the only place it works. So uh, by default, it's no wrap, but we will tell it to go against the default and be wrap. Save, reload. And now when we go in and out, if it gets too narrow, the elephant falls, the rhino falls. At some point, it does this, right? So this is all determined automatically. There are various ways to control how it wraps, how it falls, and what the width of the items are. And as you learn to use Flex, you will learn these commands one by one by experimenting with them and using them yourself. Now, I would like to have some space in between my animal blocks here. Um, so that should be obvious to you. If you want space between the items, you're going to have to add that to the class that controls the items, not to the container. So I will go in to the class single and I will put in, uh, I'm gonna replace this margin bottom with a margin that goes all the way around of 0.25 rem. And you'll see I've been using the rem, R-E-M measurement, root M, because it's very reliable, very dependable, um, and you know, it's uh, one rem is the width of a capital letter M in the root font element. So uh, this will make a, a relatively small uh, margin in between the items. And it will also have an identical margin when things begin to fall down so that the vertical margin between items and the horizontal margin between items is identical. One of the weird things about Flexbox is that we don't have margin collapse in Flexbox. We have it everywhere else in CSS, but not when you're using flex elements. So uh, you might tend to use more narrow margins than you normally do because they're actually going to all be available. So 0.25 plus 0.25 is actually 0.5, and that's what I've got in between these elements now. Another thing we probably want to do is add uh, justify on our container. And we may not really see a need for it here, um, with our items being wide enough and stretching out. There are several possibilities for justify content. And the one I'm going to use is space between. It will cause the items to be evenly distributed on the main axis, which is horizontal. So they will be evenly spaced across the entire width available to them. They won't cluster at the start or the end. 
So again, there are several uh, values for the property justify content, and you just have to look them up when you're building a flex box on your page. So I'll save and I'll reload, and that probably did not make any visible difference to us. Now, the last thing I want to do with our five animals here is I want to apply a flex box to each of the individual items. So what that'll be doing is actually putting a Flexbox container inside a Flexbox container. Up until now, we've had one container and it has affected the five boxes you see here, each with a different animal. But I can also go into the item, each animal, and on that class in my CSS, I can make these also display flex and then I can use flex rules to affect the content inside these boxes and it won't hurt or change anything we've already done. The reason I wanna do that is to show you how easy it is to center content now that we've got Flexbox. And believe me, it is so much easier than it used to be. So I'm going to go below our margin here and I'm going to uh, paste in three things and I'm going to talk about what they are. Now, display flex is what makes each individual animal div a flex box of its own. And then I set the direction. We said before how the default direction is row. Well, column, a vertical direction, is going to allow me to add what I really want to do, and that is align items along the center axis. If I did that on a row, they'd be aligned horizontally on a center axis, but I want them to be aligned on a vertical axis, so I'm going to say column, and then I'm going to align items. This is quite different from align text. It takes each element inside the div and it aligns it, so it's going to align the image and it's going to align the heading and it's going to align the block of the P, but it's not going to center the text. It's just going to center the block. So what I've added is these three lines. I'm going to save and reload, and you're going to see the difference. Voila. And that will also be in effect when they go down. And so if you were reading this on a phone, right, your, uh, your divs would look like this and it's pretty tidy and that is a pretty simple thing to be able to do and i think making a little content boxes like this is something that often comes up when we're laying out pages so this has been your first video about flex there's going to be two more about flex and in the next one we're going to see how to style a header containing a nav bar and how to set that up with flexbox